before you can think of any impact. Now, I work at the Dutch Rathenau Institute, and um, Rathenau might be a familiar name for the people here in uh, Germany. Uh, our Rathenau uh, is a former director of Philips Research. And Philips is a huge Dutch company, light bulbs, uh, medical equipment at present, um, televisions. And in the 1970s, uh, the personal computer was introduced, and Philips Research, or Philips as a company, um, was participating in the whole development of the personal computer. Uh, the director of Philips Research, our Rathenau, um, uh, thought that the personal computer was not just a novelty, an innovation that Philips was proud to participate in, or a business opportunity. Um, Rathenau realized that the personal computer would be a game changer as well. He, only, he also realized that it wasn't clear what type of game changer it would be. Um, he said there will be consequences, changes, impacts as a result from the introduction, but we cannot predict which. And then he mentioned, and he was asked by the Dutch government to write a report that it is necessary to proactively <coughs> pay attention to impacts and, if necessary, take precautions. Based on, this, uh, on the report where he articulated this, uh, the government decided to fund an institute dedicated to technology assessment, uh, the study of the consequences of new technologies, um, and later on the task to study uh, science research and innovation policies was added and then the name was changed to Rathenau Institute. In general, it is the mission of the Rathenau Institute to um, contribute to political decision making, to provide policy options, to address upcoming issues. Parliament is our main stakeholder. It's not the academic community, it's the users. So we are a research organization governed by the Royal Dutch Academy of Sciences, but it's our mission to be relevant, relevant for Parliament and also relevant for policymakers and for um, uh, organizations uh, dealing with research, universities, but also um, uh, businesses. So my expertise is in understanding uh, impact. Um, I collaborate with stakeholders a lot um, because impact is not just something that is in the eye of who, fr from whose the impact is expected, but stakeholders really play an important role. Um, at present, I'm uh, involved in the Accelerate project that I already mentioned, uh, a Horizon 2020 project dealing with, well, one sp small task is the societal impact of research infrastructures. Now, what will I talk to you today? Uh, I will talk to you about what is an infrastructure, because when we talk about impact, the question is impact of what? And I'm not so much interested in whether you do remanage or whether you enable research in the humanities or in uh, uh, material science, but far more in how are you perceived, what is expected from you, what is intended by you. And then the question also is who are the beholders, because impact is in the eye of the beholder. Who are relevant stakeholders, who is in your, in your context that wish, desire, something from you. Then the question is, and that should relate to the question what is an infrastructure, uh, what is impact? Um, potentially a research infrastructure facility can have so many impacts. There are choices on what you understand as an impact, what you pay attention to, what you put extra mm. effort in, and some impacts might happen anyway. Um, also, what is understood as an impact is not the same in every context. So you should be aware of that and I'll address that. Um, so it's about what is an infrastructure, what is impact. Um, there is no word as indicator on my slide. When I talk about information, that's what I prefer to use as the type of information you get that helps you understand whether an impact uh, is going to become manifest. Um, 
and then indicators are one part of it. Impact is my message is in the eye of the beholder. Um, it doesn't mean that as a research infrastructure or a facility uh, you are helpless and uh, uh, you need to respond to all the wishes of the beholder. Uh, I would urgently uh, uh, ask you to be proactive and to understand and uh, help the beholder also to understand who you are uh, and what you do. Um, I will present uh, quite some examples. They generally do not refer to the type of work that you are doing, uh, but just to set uh, the scene. And um, my first part is, so what is uh, an infrastructure? Um, and an infrastructure is almost like uh, an elephant. I don't know whether you know, whether you know this cartoon. It's six blind people or blindfolded people that are asked what this is. So it's a tree or it's a snake, says the one who, uh, or it's a spare, it's a fan, it's a wall. And this is more or less also what I see when I talk about research infrastructures. It can have so many different roles and functions. Um, and I want to illustrate this by an example that is rather different, but uh, provides a good uh, example. Um, and that's a regional innovation program in the Netherlands that we've been involved in shortly. Uh, one of the Dutch provinces and uh, the university in the province decided to invest a substantive amount of uh, money in the provincial knowledge economy. Uh, an umbrella was program was developed and it was decided that 10 to 15 projects would be funded uh, and we were involved briefly in order to advise uh, on the development of an evaluation approach. We organized workshops for four projects uh, that were uh, selected in the first round. Um, and participants of these workshops were representative of the province, uh, of the board of the university, researchers involved in that specific project, and in some cases, and we want it to be in all cases, uh, relevant stakeholders. The first project, I will describe two projects, was a project dedicated to developing a completely new school program for primary schools. So it was educational researchers being involved. Health is the core concept in this new school program. So there would be ample room in, uh, at school for sports, for movement, for food, lunch would be had together, um, preferably even prepared together. And this is a drastic revision uh, as compared to regularly primary school schedules. One of such things, for instance, is that the idea was that all five days, Monday through Friday, uh, had to have a similar duration which is very much against normal practice in the Netherlands because everybody knows Wednesday afternoon is off on primary schools. Um, just a small example. So, it has imp so just the fact that the Wednesday is not off and that all the, school, the other school days are all shorter has implications of course for the parents. Because uh, so what do you do with childcare or uh, who is going to work less hours on what day? Um, so in the Netherlands what you see quite some women have the Wednesday off because that's the day where you need you know, to arrange for something for the children. How can you do it now? Um, the representatives of the school board said at least 75% of the parents and of the teachers of every one of the four schools they had identified um, needed to be in favor of this change. Otherwise there wouldn't be enough support. When we were discussing this implication of insufficient, uh, it might be possible that there was ins insufficient support, the researchers proposed to continue with the project nevertheless. You might understand that the people from the province found it a bit odd that they were funding this project and that the researchers were not so much interested or included here. It also be became clear that it was not known yet whether the proposed changes were in line with national rules and regulations 
regarding primary schools. And if it's such a drastic change, then it might not be possible. So there needs to be links with you know, the ministry. Uh, so there was some concern amongst the, the people in the province. But the nice thing about this project is that it contributes to a very specific and very local societal issue. The schools are located in a former mining region in the Netherlands and after closure of the mines, the poverty level in that region has risen and obesity has become an issue. So the project would contribute a part, of course, uh, of a solution uh, to this very specific and very local societal challenge. Assuming that, health, uh, that attention for health in primary schools will make a change. Now, if you ask the researchers what this program was or this project, it was an opportunity to work for a longer time on one specific project and not to apply for funds all the time. And for the school board, it provided an opportunity to introduce a change that they were willing. So for all of the uh, involved stakeholders, it was something else. Now, there was also another project that uh, had come fundi funding, and that was the establishment of a regenerative medicine hub at the campus of the university. And this involved the successful transfer of a very successful professor in the field of regenerative materials. And the professor was successful in two ways, scientific as well as entrepreneurial. He had contributed to the academic field of reg regenerative medicine, but he had also managed to attract substantive amounts of venture capital for his spin-off company. So the regional university had provided him with an offer he couldn't refuse. So he transferred from one part of the country to this part of the country. So it provided for this professor, apparently, favorable opportunities to do further research and, and to be entrepreneurial. It provided the university with an opportunity to expand its relatively new science faculty and to position the faculty in a certain way. It provided the science park potentially with a magnet, an attractive option for companies in the field of regenerative medicine to relocate. And it provides the province with an aura or an image of high-tech entrepreneurial uh, activity. Whether this will succeed depends, of course, on quite some factors. One is whether the region is perceived as attractive for uh, uh, companies to, reconsider, uh, to consider relocation, for staff, and I know this is an issue with some of the uh, physical infrastructures uh, that are now being erected in certain parts of Europe that are not so densely populated. Um, and, of course, this is far out of the span of control of the researchers involved. But it is an element in the whole project. So other than the previous project that addressed a very specific local societal issue, there is no relation between the research that is being done and any local society challenge. Uh, well, at one point in time, there was some suggestion that the regenerative materials could be used for certain diseases and that there were people in that province with that disease. But they are everywhere throughout the world and it's a global market that uh, they operate on. So there is not really a, a connection. Um, so this is a really different type of project. And the representative of the province made it clear to the researchers that their response we have managed to establish breakthroughs bef before and to successfully fully start companies so we are confident we will manage again, is worthless in provincial politics. Because at any moment in time, and especially after elections, any decision regarding funding of this program can be changed. So more and other nef evidence was necessary. Now, what are the consequences for research infrastructures? Or why do I tell this? What an infrastructure is, is in the eye of the beholder. And what you see here, the two projects that were funded from the same program are very different and have a very different meaning, value uh, and impact. 
Um, the program is not a <coughs> research infrastructure, um, but it illustrates the point I want to make. Now, it is common practice to relate the impact of a research infrastructure uh, as relating to certain characteristics of a research infrastructure. Um, and usually characteristics that can be understood through rationally and, uh, and analytically studying the research infrastructure. Um, so then it's, uh, the impact depends, of course, on whether you are building uh, in the building phase or fully operational, whether you enable humanities or social research, social science research or materials research, uh, whether you are distributed or not, whether you are uh, a moving uh, a research infrastructure. But it does not take into account that there are many expectations or roles or visions that do not relate to the primary mission, to the, to the fact that a research infrastructure enables research. Um, it denies the context and it neglects what the beholder sees. So the questions that are relevant here are, who are relevant stakeholders when it comes to, uh, to the, in the infrastructure that we talk about? Um, and what is the infrastructure according to the stakeholder? Um, what does the stakeholder expect? Um, if you talk with people of the Dutch Ministry of Economic Affairs, then participation in uh, physical infrastructures is an opportunity for high-tech industry. There was an article in a Dutch newspaper recently that mentioned that the Netherlands was going to participate in yet another infrastructure project and it didn't mention anything concerning the possibilities for Dutch researchers in the field. It only mentioned the opportunities it provided for the Dutch high-tech industry to participate. You need to be aware, and of course for the humanities infrastructures it might be, but you need to be aware of how you are perceived and what is expected from you. Um, if you look at the ERA priorities, that the ERICS, the European Research Infrastructure Consortium, need to relate to, um, you are a vehicle to improve gender balance, whether you are uh, at Clarin or uh, the Europe, whether you are the European Spallation Source or the European Social Survey. Mm -hmm. And you need to relate to that and understand that you are seen like that. But um, so, it, so one is what is expected from you. Of course, there is also something like you are a research infrastructure. You do have a mission intention. There's formal decisions. There's, there's year plans uh, that are far more uh, probably closer to your primary mission and to what you really do. But understand the context in which you operate and understand what is expected of you. Um, so it is about intentions and expectations. Uh, but again, you can be, or should be, or will, you are uh, proactive um, and make choices. And I would suggest to not decide on your own how you are perceived and what your role and function is, but when it comes to really relevant stakeholders or beholders, uh, have a talk and try to understand what is expected from you. In our... Um, uh, Accelerate project, the director of one of the research infrastructures said we should talk with our member states and see what they expect of us. And then again, it might make a difference whether you talk with the Ministry of Economic Affairs or the Ministry of Science. So this is um, what are you as a research infrastructure? Um, uh, and addresses the issue of the elephant. Then when we go on to uh, talking about the um, um, impacts that are expected of a research infrastructure, there are potentially uh, an infinite amount of impacts that you can contribute to. Uh, and again, here you have to make a choice. They should relate somehow to 
what you are or how you, have how you are seen. Um, I use this slide, which you cannot see in the back, but um, uh, from a, uh, a project uh, where some returns and stakeholders are mentioned. Um, and then, of course, there are the technology and innovation opportunities. There's new scientific knowledge, there's new scientific opportunities. Uh, but there's also something like um, uh, improved local infrastructure, uh, transport and energy, uh, uh, jobs and employment, local expenditure, improved education and training. Uh, so there's this whole idea of impacts that, you might, uh, that might be expected of you. So here the question is, what impact? Uh, what impact is... Uh, expected from you in relation to what uh, the research infrastructure is. Um, and I will address two issues. The one issue is so what impact and then later on uh, I will address the issue and what information then uh, adds to the understanding of whether the impact is about to become manifest. Um, the, the part about what impact is the, the sandbag part. Um, the Netherlands uh, is uh, a delta, there's quite some rivers in the Netherlands. Um, we had some rainfall uh, last month, heavy rainfall. Uh, then there's always parts in the Netherlands where the levels of the river are rising and then people put sandbags. And I was quite happy to see again in one of the newspapers the question <coughs> whether this sandbag did the trick. or was it that sandbag? So here is the issue. Uh, can you attribute the value of the third sandbag from the second row to the function of this whole wall of sandbags? And I think it's important to understand that you need all the sandbags in order to prevent the water from flooding. And yes, you might do with one sandbag less, but to be sure, you add all these sandbags. What I noticed when I talk with, with pe especially people from the humanities and the social science, they find it very difficult to, 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 <coughs> to come up with causal relations between the activity of the research infrastructure and the final impact. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like you to think in terms of a contribution to an impact or a contribution to a solution and not to the problem, um, hence the, uh, the sandbags. Um, I will tell you again one of the sto a small story about an impact. Uh, an Im the impact of the location of the uh, Warner Brothers studios in northern London where the Harry Potter movies were filmed. Um, close to those studios is the University of Hertfordshire. Mm -hmm. They understood that the, uh, the studio was in need of lots of technical uh, people, uh, art department people, uh, um, uh, audiovisual staff. So they added extensively a department to their university uh, they added uh, courses to their university dedicated to um, uh, uh, art direction, uh, for camera people, um, uh, digital uh, uh, um, uh, aid. That is an impact of the fact that the Harry Potter movies were being filmed at that location. Now, if you ask, or if you had asked Warner Brothers before what they would expect of an impact of being there, I don't know whether they would have known or, or, or had any idea that it would mean that the University of Hertfordshire would open up whole new departments and would really extend uh, what it was doing. So this is an, an, an impact that they didn't anticipate. But by just being there, happened. Now, some impacts are a bit closer. Um, 
I was in Bologna at, uh, in February at a meeting of uh, a digital of social science and humanities research infrastructure, social science and humanities, ERICS. And there I find it interesting to notice that it took 24 hours before I heard the first example of an impact. I had been at the Big Science Business Forum in Copenhagen as well, uh, where I heard everything about, well, especially, you know, the, the World Wide Web from CERN and uh, the microwave oven and all the good medicine and all the new materials, very fake, very big. And then I, s I noticed that uh, in Bologna it was very difficult to mention specific impacts. But they were there and they were really nice and specific. One was, and I didn't know, that the author of the Dutch national anthem, who we all know is Philips van Sint Aldegonde, is someone else. Due to the research that the humanities people had done and they found out that it couldn't be him and that it was highly probable that it was someone else. Then of course there's always a discussion, what's it worth? The World Wide Web is far more you know, important than knowing who wrote the Dutch national anthem. There's also the question of what can you expect? What do you expect? And I think that, well for us, I mean, it's, it's rather an old text and we all learned at school who the author was. So it's part of our national identity and culture. It is quite something to add to that, so you should mention it. But also, some, it's, it's not always that the, the physical uh, materials people are proud of their impacts. One of our members in the Accelerate project, um, it's in, in Munich, um, they enable research with a neutron source. Uh, a spillover thing of the neutron source is that they provide radioisotopes to the world and um, in general I'm not in favor of just boasting and saying you know this is it so be proud but they uh, contribute substantively to cancer treatment and I think it's quite an important contribution they make and it's like something they just do apart from all the work they enable and I think you should mention that that is an impact and they found it a bit difficult to understand that as an impact. Now, when you look at impact, there's two issues when it comes to understanding what an impact is. One, the model. So usually we try to understand an impact as an effect or a change in behavior or a practice. We think also in terms, and especially people in, in who do evaluation, in terms of modeling the relation between the infrastructure or the research activity and the effect. In the case of research infrastructures, and given that the research infrastructure can be so many things, and hence that there can be so many impacts, we identify that quite often adding to the solution and not to the problem is more or less what is expected. But I'll show you some models that are used. Uh, this is a very nice model uh, designed by Technopolis. They use it for one specific research infrastructure. It's a logic framework, so you analytically think, okay, what is this infrastructure? It's in the building, in the construction phase, it's in the operation phase. Um, then what types, what do you put into? What activities do you do? What is the outcome? What's the output? What's the outcome? And then what's the change in the end? And then you can divide that be between the several phases. Um, but if you look at that from the point of view of a research <coughs> infrastructure, the world becomes uh, more confused because what you do might lead to a huge variety of changes, of movements, of impacts. So what we uh, propose or what we use as well is more a theory of change uh, approach. There you start with the ultimate impact or what is expected um, and then you identify and when I say you, I mean those involved, including the stakeholders. So what are preconditions before an impact to happen? 
what needs to happen before in order for that. What do we assume by that? And, um, and who, what other stakeholders should be involved? Um, so if you look at societal impact, then well, the results have to be used at one point, they have to be shared, uh, and there needs to be users. Um, and then you can see that if you look at what that means, that it provides you a way to think, so do we, do we want certain users to use our facility? And if so, do we need to uh, reach out to them in a certain way? If we are seen, again, if we are perceived as a scientific facility, and we say that we will have uh, users from companies as well, we might not attract the people from the companies. Maybe we should do something extra or something other, have an industrial liaison officer to reach out to industry because otherwise we might not be seen, recognized or understood as a, a potential uh, facility to use. The interesting thing also is that when you think of it this way, it also becomes clear what the accountability ceiling is. And I mean accountability not in the new public management way of accountability, but really your responsibility. So to what extent, in this case a research infrastructure, how far you are responsible, what you are responsible for, and where your responsibility stops, where it's really out in the open. It also implies that until that, you do have a responsibility. And it is up to you to maybe arrange and organize, do something for the impact to happen. So one question is how do you think of, of, of impact, the relation between the impact and the, uh, and the infrastructure. Um, but then how an impact is understood is also in the eye of the beholder. And if you look for instance uh, in the UK there is the research excellence framework where impact is one of the criteria. And there it's very narrowly described as research uh, that has been done by the specific department and has to have a certain quality and there needs to be this demonstrable use uh, of the research. It has to have an impact. It needs to be confirmed by stakeholders. If you look at the Dutch similar evaluation situation, the standard evaluation protocol, you see that impacts are far more efforts of the research department, of interactions with stakeholders, of recognition by the stakeholder, uh, examples of use. But there doesn't, uh, the impact doesn't need to be there yet. It might also be something that you, know, you, have, you have initiated, so you don't know. If you look at the similar broader impacts criterion that the National Science Foundation uses, um, you see that there is a suggestion that you should reach out to schools or underprivileged groups. And if you understand American culture and society, you can understand why they do it. But there's no such thing in, in the Netherlands or the UK. So impact, it doesn't only depend on the, on the national context, but also on the local, the institutional context. So be aware of what is asked of you. Also, if you look at Horizon 2020, in the Societal Challenges Pillar, the impacts are defined. If you look at, uh, for instance, the Dutch Innovation uh, Scheme, which is similar to the ERC, but it includes a knowledge utilization uh, a criterion, you see that it's up to the, to the researcher, the applicant, to define the impact. And then if you look at the, the ERA, the European Union, you see that impacts are really, again, something different, like what I mentioned before, gender balance. Um, so understand the context in which you operate and understand when you are being evaluated, understand the context of the evaluation. And I think it's, uh, it's important to, um, to articulate what you contribute to an impact. Um, 
or an expectation and, and how you fulfill your mission and that you understand to what extent you are accountable and with whom to collaborate as well. Um, and also understand really to what extent. So when we talk with CERIC about their uh, contribution to the ERA priority gender, they say, well, we are 10 people, our staff is 10 people. And um, yeah, it's about 50-50 men and women, but you cannot expect that to change the gender balance in Europe. They do select users and they do have an eye on gender. The difficult thing is, of course, that they need to be uh, provide open access. So there cannot be an extra gender issue, but still. But then does that really, you know, even if they manage to have a very nice gender balance in their <coughs> users, does that contribute to any change? No, but it, it or realized change? No, but it contributes not to the problem. It, it is like, it contributes to what we have agreed upon, what a political decision is, uh, and how to proceed forward. Be realistic also, eh? Um, of what you can promise and what you can contribute. And then of course the question is, so who decides on whether something is good or what the value is? And you have to have an eye on that as well. Here I think it's really important to understand that I have not found the impact police yet. I don't know, maybe you have, but I haven't come across people who know what is a good impact or who know how it should be viewed. So you, we are all in it and that means you including your stakeholders, your users, your funders, your members. And you need to define what impact is together, I think. And you should reach out and, um, and talk with them. Then the question is, and, and so the sandbag, there you see that, that one sandbag might not have made a difference, but that one sandbag contributed to uh, preventing the city to be flooded. And it is, I think, important to realize. Then the last part, what, is, uh, what information is relevant, necessary, uh, provides insight when it comes to impact. And again, what valid information is, is in the eye of the beholder as well. And then for regional economic boards, and then again with fiscal research infrastructures, a socio-economic return on investment report might be necessary. If that is the case, do it. But the question is what you know. Um, and I would like to ask, and I think that's, that's the aim of this workshop as well, to really understand so what contributes to the impact and to have the discussion with your stakeholders or your beholders what it is that contributes to an impact. Um, you mentioned that I studied chemistry and um, I had quite some difficulty understanding the concept of indicator. Uh, when I when I started working in this field, uh, until last it, it took, I don't know, it lasted for uh, seven eight years. Uh, last year I helped my daughter who did uh, her final exam of the secondary school. She did chemistry, um, and she wanted to know something about pH indicator. So pH is the acidity of a liquid. And finally, I understood my issue with indicators <laughs> because I perceive an indicator as a chemist, um, and I think um, it might be helpful if others do so as well. So, and, and what is an indicator? Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm not in favor, but here I think we should learn. So, uh, the pH or the acidity of a liquid is between zero and 14. When it's seven, it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's medium. Um, so you might want to have a certain pH for a certain reason, and that's something that's been decided upon because of your experiment, because we have agreed that you know the water needs to have a certain acidity or not. There are all these chemicals, very nice, that change color when the pH changes. So depending on uh, the pH of a liquid and the pH that you want to reach, 
you decide what indicator to use and then you know you, you put acid in or you okay so the indicator is now uh, so so oh now it turned from red to yellow lacmus is the the, the the most famous one from red to uh, from red to blue so now we are basic or the other way around there is no inherent value in the in the value of the ph nor in the color of the liquid it helps to indicate point out that we are at a certain point on the pH scale and apparently it was decided that we needed uh, to be at that certain point. Now if I in my kitchen even as a, a former chemist and I make a salad and I make a vinaigrette and I use oil and vinegar or oil and lemon I don't use any of these I just use my finger and I taste it and I'm saying it's a little bit too acid or not enough and I add some oil or vinegar. Here I need a very different measure and here it becomes personal because what I think is acid might not be perceived as acid by someone else. So an indicator just informs us of where we are and I think it is important to think of an indicator as something that provides information. The indicator is not the impact the indicator indicates that something is happening and it provides information. So th then the question becomes, what information do you need in order to understand whether an impact is about to happen? So well, you need to start from who are you, what is expected of you, then in relation to what impact is, uh, 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 are we talking about? And then you can think, so what do we do in order, and this has to do with the accountability ceiling, eh, what do we do, in order for an impact to become manifest. And that might be quite a diverse range of information. Um, so what is always said, well, think of input, so with how many people are we? In case of CEREC, it's 10 people working at CEREC. That is relevant to understand whether they can make uh, a big difference uh, with their gender balance uh, in Europe. It's a small organization, so that will not be a very big difference. Um, but also the activities. And this is so now we are talking about the governance. So, what choices do you make? What uh, policies do you have? What procedures do you have? Um, Again, an example of the uh, CEREC, it's a Central European Research Infrastructure Consortium. They have, um, uh, uh, most of their members are in Eastern Europe. Um, they noticed, so what you do is you apply as a potential user, you apply for uh, time to use a beamline. And then you get rejected or accepted. It was noticed by the people from CERC that the people from Eastern Europe would not reapply after rejection. Whereas the people from Western Europe, they just rewrite their application. They think, okay, so this was not uh, a good application. I improve it, reapply again. They realized how important it is for them, given that they have such a big, most of their members are in Eastern Europe, um, that they needed to reach out to potential Eastern European users. So they organized a small workshop for potential users, especially from potential users from Eastern Europe, in order to explain to them, so what is this application process about? And what does it mean when you get rejected? And what does a good application look like? In order to get a better or more people from Eastern Europe to apply. That sounds like a very small and unimportant step to make. But if you need to report to your Eastern European partners, or if you need to report relating to the ERA priorities, uh, it might be quite important, being such a small organization, that you've done this. But you also need to understand that that is what you do in order to contribute to an impact, or that, that that's, wha that's what you do when you are seen or recognized as a vehicle to 
to, to uh, get the people from Eastern Europe to use the infrastructures as well. It also means that if you present a case, then it should be clear what the case study is a case of. So I often see case studies that are interesting stories, and I think there's, th there's two issues I have with them. One is that I don't understand what this case is a case of. So what does it illustrate? Does it illustrate a certain vision, a certain policy, a certain impact that is uh, uh, desired? And also, uh, I see case studies that are chronicles, and then, and then, and then, without any causal relation. And then I get lost as well, because sometimes I think, then I might as well, you know, does it happen again next time? Did it happen by accident? Or was there anything that you have done that you will do next time as well? And then I really look at it from the point of view of an evaluator. So what do I know, what do I know now? Is this an incident, an accident, or is it somehow that people had an eye on? Um, I think most important when you talk of impact of research infrastructures that you also need to find out what uh, information does the stakeholder need or accept as valid information. But also, and I think that's important for this uh, workshop as well, what information helps you to understand the impact. And so it's, it's not known what the impact process, how it really looks. It's very contextual, we know. Um, but when you have information, you, you might try to answer, okay, so this happens, this, this doesn't work, or this does work. Um, what I said before, I don't think in terms of indicators, I think in terms of indications or information that is necessary or valid or important provides insight. And an indicator does, does not equal impact. And it might be a bit of a strange message, but I, he I hear people talk about impact, and this happened at the same big science business forum as well, so it's where the business developers were asked, so how about impact? of the work you do. And they said, that's difficult. We don't have an indicator for that. And I thought, but you need to know what the impact is before you can identify an indicator of any information that learns you what you're doing. In short, I mentioned impact is in the eyes of the beholder, what an, a research infrastructure is, is in the eyes of the beholder, what an impact is, is in the eyes of the beholder, what valid information is, is in the eyes of the beholder. So it provides you with the possibility to be proactive and to direct the viewpoint of the beholder, uh, and therefore it's need necessary that you identify what a relevant beholder is, to adjust the focus and to point out impacts so that both you as your stakeholders can learn and decide together what impact is, what relevant impacts are and what contributes to impacts. And um, I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you.